Within days of the murder of the British student Meredith Kircher, the Italian police had arrested three suspects. The prosecution claimed they had forced Meredith to take part in a violent drug-fueled sex game and then killed her. It was a sensational story and the police were triumphant. Caso Chiuso. Case closed. It seemed that the murder of Meredith Kircher had been solved. Under interrogation, Amanda Knox, an American student, first denied she was there and then confessed to being present when Meredith was killed. Maybe you smoke too much, you drink too much, and all of a sudden something gets out of control and somebody gets killed. Amanda Knox and her boyfriend, Raffaele Salecito, now face up to 30 years in prison. She's absolutely innocent. There's no doubt in my mind that she's had nothing to do with this. Knox had accused her boss of carrying out the knifing. He's now been released. I think Amanda accused me because I'm black. Five months on, Knox is locked up but has still not been charged and the police investigation is facing criticism at home and abroad. Does anyone really know what happened the night Meredith died? Meredith Kircher was murdered in her bedroom on the night of November the 1st. The police found her partially clothed body lying on the floor under a duvet. The girl's neck was badly bruised on one side. On the other, a very deep knife wound. La morte è stata determinata da più fatti. C'è stata una ferita importante al collo. C'è stata aspirazione di sangue nei polmoni. C'è stata anche un costringimento del collo, si chiama strozzamento, strangolamento a seconda. Credo che l'afferramento abbia preceduto l'accoltellamento. First reports claimed that Meredith had been the victim of a sadistic sexual attack. Her killers had forced her to the ground and then stabbed her. The 21-year-old girl had then suffered a slow, agonizing death, drowning in her own blood. She's looking forward to coming home this weekend for her mother's birthday. We feel it's no exaggeration to say that Meredith touched the lives of everyone she met with her infectious, upbeat personality, smile and sense of humour. Meredith had come to this hilltop city to study political history at the University of Perugia. News of the murder spread through the 40,000 students like wildfire. E non ci volevo credere perché Perugia è un centro piccolissimo, si conoscono quasi tutti gli studenti, era un po' come se fosse successo a casa mia. Che forte paura che una persona, un uomo, possa commettere una cosa così crudele. Suddenly, it seemed everybody had a theory about the murder. Young people coming from all over the world, away from their own communities. Finally, they come to Perugia and they explode. They do what they want. And once in a while, something goes wrong. You maybe you smoke too much, you drink too much, you think you are in kind of exciting one another like a, like a group sex activity and all of a sudden something gets out of control and somebody gets killed. The world's media were on the case. Every step was catalogued. They could then a sensational development. With great fanfare, the police announced that they had arrested an American student and her Italian lover. 
According to the prosecution, Amanda Knox from Seattle and her boyfriend Raffaello Solecito had killed Meredith with the help of Knox's boss, Congolese bar owner Patrick Lumumba. Overnight, Amanda Knox and her lover became international celebrities. Noi sosteniamo l'innocenza della ragazza e il mistero. Speculation was rife with tales of students high on drugs, alcohol and sex or even of a cold calculated killing, jointly planned, jointly executed. Knox's arrest had played right into the fears of the older generation. Soon a flood of pop psychology was filling the newspapers. Perugia was being painted as Dante by day, Inferno by night. The problem with Perugia, it was said, was the internet generation. Era quasi sconsigliato uscire in quei giorni a Perugia perché c'erano più giornalisti che studenti e come ti vedevano con un bicchiere di birra in mano venivano là ti inquadrano e dicevano ma tu fai parte di quelli che si ubriacano la sera ti riprendono e dicono questa è la gioventù perugina. When the press found photographs of Knox and Solecito on the internet they had a field day. Solecito was wrapped head to foot holding a meat cleaver in one hand and a bottle of bleach in the other. Knox was shown sitting behind a machine gun with the caption, the Nazi on the inside. I'm not... I just tell you then a video turned up on YouTube showing Knox getting drunk. One shot, man. It was one and a half, okay? One shot. The press discovered that Knox styled herself Foxy Noxy and that she had written a story about two brothers, both into drugs and rape. One line read, the girl you raped, Kyle, did you know her name? By the time Knox's parents visited their daughter in prison, Foxy Noxy was getting the attention of a mafia boss rather than an American sweetheart. We have no comment. Thank you. Please. Call me for we have to believe that the system's going to finally get it right, that they've got an innocent girl detained. And, you know, we just have to believe that it's, she, they're going to see the light and they're going to release her. The hardest part is leaving her there. You know, you go when you're happy to see her and she's thrilled that, that you're there and there's lots of, lots of hugs and um, lots of trying to um, encourage her and, and make sure that she's finding a way to be happy, but walking away and leaving your innocent daughter there is, is heartbreaking. In that heady first week, the prosecution's version of Meredith's murder had become the gospel. Meredith had been killed by Amanda Knox and her friends. All three suspects were doubtless guilty but that absolute certainty was soon about to crumble. Within days of the death of Meredith Kircher, the prosecution were claiming it was a murder based on drugs and sex. They were convinced that Meredith's flatmate, Amanda Knox, was right at the heart of the crime. Amanda è dipinta dagli investigatori come una specie di ragno, che, una vedova nera, ecco, quello che una donna pericolosa e assassina che nelle sue spire di erotiche praticamente eh, unisce tutti gli altri membri della questione, della, della scena del delitto. E io credo che se Amanda fosse stata brutta non, non sarebbe successo questo. Already, the first doubts about the police case were beginning to surface. Mayo Ponte is one of Italy's leading crime journalists. Over the years, he has covered murders by the mafia, political assassinations, sex crimes, and everyday domestic killings. He was not convinced by the lurid tales about Foxy Noxy. 
non sappiamo ancora nulla di preciso. Perlomeno è un mistero perché Meredith sia stata uccisa e soprattutto come e da chi. Non abbiamo un movente e non abbiamo nemmeno una dinamica del delitto. When Ponte went to Perugia, his concerns about the case increased. At the crime scene, he soon realized that the police investigation had not been as thorough as it could have been. Eppure pensavo non fosse difficile riuscire a capire cosa è successo qui dentro. Non riesco a capire come mai non si siano trovate tracce di fuga, ad esempio. Essendoci stato del sangue, qualche macchia di sangue avrebbe dovuto essere anche lungo la via di fuga. È uno dei misteri di questa vicenda. Ponti went across to the University for Foreigners, just five minutes from the crime scene, to see where the story of Meredith and Amanda Knox began. Set up under Mussolini, the university is world famous for its Italian language teaching. Knox arrived here last August for a three-month course. Soon she heard about a room to rent. Her flatmates would be Meredith and two Italian girls. On her blog she writes, it's a cute house that is right in the middle of this random garden. We enter through a gate and there it is. I'm in love. The house was a converted cottage with four girls on the upper floor and four Italian boys on the lower. Meredith had just started a relationship with one of the boys downstairs. Both girls had separate rooms and separate friends. Before long, there were tensions between the new flatmates. Amanda, secondo me, che è una personalità molto interessante, molto contorta e molto complessa e soprattutto ha anche dovuto fare i conti con quella che era l'evidente antipatia che avevano per lei le amiche di Meredith. Tutte queste ragazze ci tengono a dire che lei non aveva un buon rapporto con la Meredith che Meredith la criticava perché lei portava i ragazzi a casa, ma non solo, perché non puliva la casa, insomma perché veniva meno alle regole di convivenza di una coabitazione. Meredith, at 21, was just one year older than Amanda Knox when she arrived in Perugia. She told her father about the men that Knox brought home. Strange types, she said. Meredith was a fantastic girl. She was just so bubbly all the time. She never seemed to worry about anything. Um, she always made the best of the situation. And she was just always smiling and always happy and made you feel a lot like at home, like when you were around her. The last pictures of Meredith were taken the night before she died. It was Halloween. Meredith era travestita vampiro, diciamo. Eh, aveva questo mantello nero, questi denti finti. E anche io avevo adottato questo vestito. Infatti mi ricordo del poveriggio avevamo avuto una disputa con Meredith perché doveva prendere i denti finti che erano rimasti l'ultimo, diciamo, paio nel negozio qui in centro dove li vendevano. The following evening, Meredith had a pizza with friends and watched the film Notebook on DVD. Just before nine, she walked back to the cottage, telling her friends that she was tired and wanted an early night. She went some of the way with one of the girls she'd had supper with. The last part of the walk, however, Meredith was on her own. The following morning, the postal police in Perugia, the branch of the police dealing with communication crimes, received a phone call from a woman living not far from Meredith's house. La polizia postale è 
è, è andata alla casa del via della Pergola 7 per un motivo banalissimo, nel senso che qualche ora prima una signora a circa 200 metri dall'abitazione aveva ritrovato in un prato i due cellulari di Meredith e quindi loro sono andati a casa per vedere se gli erano stati rubati. Quando la polizia è arrivata, they found Knox and Selegito waiting outside. The couple told them they were worried about Meredith as her room was still locked. They all went into the house and the police forced the door into Meredith's room. The crime scene photographs tell their own sad story. Blood around the room, underwear on the floor, and the duvet taken from the bed to cover the dead body. The police began their investigation. Near the body, they found a footprint in the blood. On a pillow, a bloody handprint. But there was no murder weapon. Mayo Ponte was relying on his contact with the police and the lawyers for his information. Leek's court reports showed that the investigating magistrate believed the suspects had taken drugs and were looking for new sensations. But how much of that was supposition and how much fact? Professor Carlo Torre is a leading pathologist who has performed 6,000 post-mortems. When Mayo Ponte told him about the case, he decided to get involved. Torre thought that from how Meredith had died, the murder had been committed by one person, not by a group. Allora, c'è un afferramento da questa parte del collo, operato con una mano sinistra, e c'è un colpo di coltello vibrato in questo modo che ha potuto raggiungere in profondità il collo in una situazione di questo genere è difficile immaginare che si sia in tanti è un'operazione che normalmente svolge una persona sola un colpo così ancora noi qui adesso siamo in piedi dobbiamo immaginare che la vittima sia sdraiata al suolo per cui io la posso immobilizzare al suolo in questo modo e colpirla con il coltello The police began questioning Meredith's friends. Knox told them that she'd spent the night at her boyfriend's. The following morning, she said, she came back to her house and found the front door wasn't properly closed. I got a, a phone call early in the morning and it was Amanda and the first thing, thing she said was, I'm at home and I'm all right, but I think somebody's been in my house. Knox claimed there were spots of blood in one bathroom and an unflushed toilet in another. She decided to take a shower. In one of the other girls' rooms, a window had been smashed. According to Knox, after she'd taken her shower, she went back to get Salagito, and they both returned to the house together. That was when the police turned up, and the murder investigation began. Soon the press and the police were beginning to take notice of how Knox and Selegito were behaving. Cameras caught them kissing outside the house. It was deemed inappropriate behavior. When the interviews continued at the police station, there was more criticism. Tutti erano molto appunto scioccati, tristi, tranne loro due, Amanda e il ragazzo appunto Ridevano, fra, ridevano, scherzavano fra di loro, eh, si sbaciucchiavano, non, sembravano al di fuori di tutto quello che fosse successo, al di fuori della situazione che c'era in quel momento. At the University for Foreigners, where Knox was studying Italian, there were more tales. The press got hold of a letter written by Knox to her mother as part of her course. Knox's main concern seemed to be to go shopping. I'm on edge. I can't stop thinking about Meredith's death. What I really want, Mom, 
is for you to take me shopping. This whole thing happened and we got into school on Monday and I actually said to my friend, it's strange that Amanda say, I mean, her roommate got killed, I, I wouldn't want to go to school anymore. To me, she didn't seem... I don't know, she... She didn't seem shocked or... She seemed sad, but apart from, not like I, I'd imagine a person or I'd imagine myself when a person that is close to me gets killed in, in that way. Then a security video came to light from a local clothes shop. The shopkeeper told journalists that Knox had been buying sexy underwear and that she and Selecito had been kissing, giggling about the great sex they were going to have. As press criticism increased, the police stepped up their investigation of the couple. Just four days after the murder, they were called in for intensive questioning. The police had traced a text from Knox to Patrick Lumumba, who ran a bar where Knox worked. The text simply said, OK, fine, see you later. When the police put it to Knox that she had arranged to meet Lumumba as part of the plan to kill Meredith, Knox completely changed her story. She now said she was there when Meredith was killed and claimed that it was Lumumba who murdered her. I heard Meredith screaming and I was so frightened I blocked my ears. I don't remember anything after that. My head's all confused. Within hours, Knox, Selecito and Lumumba were under arrest. The Perugia police had solved Meredith Kircher's murder in record time. At the serious crime squad in Rome, you could almost hear the champagne corks popping. the capture of Bernardo Provenzano, Bernardo Provenzano, who was the head of the mafia Siciliana, these queste sono delle foto che ritraggono un killer seriale in queste immagini vengono rappresentati altri successi del servizio centrale operativo Solving the Perugia murder had already become part of the folklore Beh, attraverso delle tecniche investigative molto particolari abbiamo deciso di fare molte domande a tutti i testimoni e di valutare le risposte e soprattutto il comportamento che questi testimoni avevano in occasione degli interrogatori. Questo ci ha dato una traccia per individuare soprattutto Amanda Knox e Raffaele Sollecito. In a leaked report, the investigating magistrate was talking about grave indications of guilt. Che il Gip Matteini cioè lei immagina una scena in cui Meredith sta al centro di tre persone con Patrick che sta cercando di avere un rapporto probabilmente contro natura con lei, con due persone che la minacciano e che poi culmina nell'omicidio però fatto da Patrick. E questo è un romanzo. Non è la realtà. We now know that inside the police station, a few hours after Knox accused Lumumba, she changed her mind. In a handwritten statement, she reverted to her original story that she was not at the house at all that night. This is very strange, I know. But really what happened is as confusing to me as it is to everyone else. These things seem unreal to me, like a dream. I know I didn't kill Meredith. That's all I know for sure. Knox's retraction came too late. By then, she was already locked up and facing a murder charge.
Amanda Knox and her boyfriend are suspected of murdering the British student Meredith Kircher. The case has become mired in Italian legal bureaucracy. I know the judicial system in this country, in Italy. It takes a long time. It takes months before you, you have the evidence, and then the evidence is contradictory. So everything is foggy. You don't know where you are. That's why it's a great triumph of confusion. In the early stages of the investigation, everything seemed to be going the police's way. Every day, new rumors justified the arrests. Knox had been seen by two men washing some clothes and a pair of shoes with an African man in Via Fabretti the day after the murder. CCTV cameras in a car park across the way from her house had captured images of Knox entering the cottage just before Meredith arrived. There were reports that neighbors living in the flats overlooking the cottage had seen two people running away from the house. None of these stories has yet been substantiated. The prosecution by this time had turned their attention to Knox's boyfriend, Raffaele Solecito, at his flat in Corso Garibaldi. They were looking for a pair of shoes to match a bloody footprint found at the crime scene. And they were also looking for the murder weapon. They claimed they found both. The police turned up a pair of Solecito's trainers and were convinced they had a perfect match. They also claimed they had a possible murder weapon. Tests on the knife revealed Meredith's DNA on the tip of the blade and Knox's DNA on the handle. When it was revealed that Solecito had a knife collection, everything seemed to fit into place. Knox had met Solecito shortly before the murder. They had been dating for yeah, about two weeks, two weeks, but I think it was, I think it was a steady two weeks. They met at a, a, a classical musical concert at the college, and he came to her place of work after that. And I think they just really clicked. She put him on the phone, say hi to Raphael. Um, you know, um, yeah. Solecito is from a well-off family in the south of Italy. He came to the University of Perugia to study computer science. The police were having problems holding Patrick Lumumba the man Knox had accused. He ran a nightclub called Le Chic. A forensic examination of the club brought up nothing, and there were no traces of Lumumba at the crime scene. To add to this, Lumumba had an alibi. There were witnesses who could prove he had been in his bar all night. Patrick. Finally, the Perugia police had to face up to the facts and Lumumba was released. For Lumumba, it was the end of a nightmare. Every time I try to ask him why, why I am there, but nobody told me why. He said, Mayor, you know what you did. You know what you did. Maybe they're saying some, uh, some, they're saying maybe terrorism, maybe something. I think it's that, yeah. I think Amanda accused me because I'm black. I think that. You know, when you look at the face of Amanda, it's a kid face, you know? And uh, what he did for me, because it's not, uh, it's not good, yeah, you know. Knox's confession had led the police down the wrong path. The case was opening up again. Less than three weeks after the murder, 
new evidence was appearing that someone else had been in Meredith's house that night, and that was going to change everything. Tutta l'impostazione, tutto il quadro indiziario, tutta il disegno messo a posto dal Jeep non aveva più senso a quel punto perché veniva messo in forza da una nuova persona, da, dall'ingresso sulla scena del delitto di una quarta persona. I'm a vampire. I'm Dracula. I'm Dracula. When the police named the fourth person, he too had a bizarre posting on the internet. Rudy Gueda, who lived in Perugia, became the subject of a police manhunt. Gueda had fled the country soon after the murder. The police checked out his Facebook site and contacted his list of friends. When he phoned them on the internet, the police were listening in. The police traced the computer Rudy Gueda was using to an internet cafe in Germany. The next step was to get Interpol to arrest him. Back in Italy, Gueda admitted being at the house when Meredith died, but insisted he had not killed her. Both in a letter written in Germany and under interrogation by the Italian police, he said he was in the toilet listening to his iPod when he heard Meredith screaming. He claimed the murderer, an Italian man, had attacked him before fleeing, possibly with an accomplice. He then went to Meredith, but she was already dying. He tried to staunch the knife wound with a towel. Gueda then left the house and went with friends to a disco. The following day, he took a train to Germany. The dichiarazioni di Rudy sono poco credibili, no? Tradizionale eh, le considera strane, insomma. Non si va eh, mentre uno sta con una ragazza eh, in un eh, rapporto di tipo amoroso, non è che si alza se ne va in bagno e quando esce dal bagno trova due assassini che uccidono la ragazza, questa è una cosa che è molto difficile in quel contesto, no? in quella realtà. As the police searched Guaida's house, they knew that to maintain the group killing theory, they would have to establish a connection between Guaida and Knox and Solacito. No dell'inchiesta è riuscire l'accusa per provare il suo teorema deve assolutamente riuscire a provare il collegamento tra Amanda e Rudy almeno perché una volta collegati Amanda e Rudy e chiaramente entra in gioco anche Raffaele As if to answer the police's prayers a star witness appeared An Albanian immigrant claimed he had seen the suspects lurking by a rubbish bin just 50 meters from Meredith's house The Albanian said that on the night before the murder, as he was parking his car near the house, he ran into a dumpster. He claimed Knox, Selecito and Gueda immediately sprang out and that Knox threatened him with a knife. But despite this new witness and the fact that all the suspects lived in the same part of the city, the police were still having difficulty connecting Gueda with Knox and Selecito. Then, after being in custody for four months, Gueda, just like Knox, changed his story about the night Meredith died. Under interrogation, Gueda claimed that the assailant was Raffaele Salecito and that Amanda Knox was in the house as well. The prosecution was soon claiming this new evidence was the nail in the coffin for the accused. Case closed again. The defense simply saw it as the police believing what they wanted to believe. 
questo è una deviazione dal sistema dell'investigazione perché in pratica tende a scoraggiare chi ti dice una cosa che è contraria a quello che gli investigatori pensano e tende invece a incoraggiare evidente tutte le versioni che sono in qualche modo accettate che vanno nell'ottica dell'investigazione Once again the case didn't stay closed for long a second pathology report revealed that despite all the stories there was no evidence of rape or sexual assault on Meredith's body the pathologist confirmed that Rudy's DNA had been found inside Meredith but it was likely to be skin cells from a finger or cells from saliva the police however were still continuing to say the murder was based on group sex che poi non è solo l'assenza della violenza che abbiamo già ma è anche l'assenza di un rapporto sessuale in quel momento. Allora, tutta l'ipotesi fatta dal GIF e anche dai successivi esami è, è, è campata in aria. Assolutamente inventata, come si dice, l'ipotesi. The forensic evidence in the case was proving to be a mixed blessing. Having been back to Salecito's flat, the police were saying the knife they had found there was not the murder weapon itself. And now there were leaks claiming that two knives had been used, one of them from Solecito's knife collection. The footprint found in Meredith's room, which the police claimed had been left by Solecito, it now turns out may have come from Rudy Gueda. The police say bloodstains found in Knox's bathroom have DNA from both Meredith and Knox, They say the spots got there when Knox washed off Meredith's blood. But a full forensic report has not yet been issued. Yet one piece of evidence does stand out. The prosecution are convinced that DNA from both Rudy Queda and Raffaella Solecito is on a piece cut from Meredith's bra. For Raffaella c'è un grosso problema, perché quello è un picco alto. Stiamo parlando di un profilo molto alto ed è soprattutto spiegabile che lì non dovrebbe esserci. One police theory is that the killers cut up Meredith's bra to make the murder look like a rape attack and that's why Solecito's DNA is on the bra clasp. In this crime scene video leaked to Italian television, the investigators filmed the bra clasp hours after Meredith's body was found. What is causing concern is that the clasp was not formally entered into evidence till six weeks later when the forensic team made a second examination, this time with the defendant's lawyers present. Footage from the second forensic examination has also been leaked, and this also shows the bra clasp. This time, however, the police seem to take more interest. They mark the spot on the floor where the clasp is found. However, from this video, it looks as if the clasp is now in a different place than it was on the first video. Also, when the investigators place the clasp in the specimen bag, the defense claim it appears to have been contaminated since the first video. If that defense claim turns out to be true, the DNA evidence against Solecito will be seriously undermined. Io credo che purtroppo nelle indagini, almeno in Italia, ci si affida troppo alla scienza e meno alle indagini tradizionali alla tenente Colombo, diciamo così, e, e allora si dà troppa, eh, si pensa sempre che la scienza risolva tutto, la scienza risolve quelle poche cose che può risolvere, che di solito sono cose abbastanza marginali e soprattutto se viene spinta all'estremo, come appunto la ricerca di tracce infinitesimali di DNA, può portare a degli errori gravissimi.
with the police version of the murder coming under such scrutiny, soon other theories about the murder were appearing, invariably less lurid and almost always involving a lone killer. È un delitto fatto per paura. L'assassino è sicuramente una persona che si era invaghito di Meredith. E allora che cosa è successo? Che questo ragazzo probabilmente, o perché è innervosito o per altri motivi, eh, l'ha presa per il collo. Forse ha stretto un po' troppo e stringendo un pochino troppo la ragazza ha perso i sensi. A questo punto loro erano molto probabilmente seduti sul letto. La ragazza è svenuta quindi è, 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 è caduta un po' dal letto e lui l'ha accompagnata in questo cadere e lì si è spaventato, ha avuto paura, ha avuto paura di averla uccisa e pensato nella confusione di quel momento essere sicuro di completare l'opera e quindi le ha dato una coltellata alla gola ecco, e allora ecco che nasce viene fuori un, un omicidio addirittura Amanda Knox is spending her fifth month in an Italian jail on suspicion of murdering the British student Meredith Kircher. The Italian High Court has ruled that Knox and the two other suspects can be kept in jail for up to a year without being charged. She doesn't understand why she's being held because she hasn't, she, done, anything. She hasn't done anything. And it becomes very difficult as parents to try to tell her why she's here mm -hmm. and you have to just kind of put everything in very short horizons for her so that she can get through this because prison is not easy. Le oscillazioni dell'umore sono eh, caratteristiche di ognuno di noi per loro magari in maniera un po', un po più vistosa però normalmente abbastanza tranquilla. Credo che tutti la conservino sia chi magari riconosce anche la sua colpevolezza e spera in una sentenza giusta o mite, sia anche chi sostiene la sua innocenza e quindi chiaramente la speranza è più grande. Eh, fondamentalmente sì, questa speranza la sostiene giorno dopo giorno. The prosecution say they intend to charge the three suspects in June and hope to put them on trial in October. By then, Knox, Selecito and Guida will have spent nearly a year in prison. You see, that's the Italian mentality. If you keep them there long enough, all by themselves, who knows? If you put some sort of technological device to listen to their intimate conversations, their diaries, etc., they might betray themselves. They might uh, disclose the truth about what happened. New leaks and new rumors still appear almost daily, but without a confession, there seems to be little real progress. Io credo che la soluzione a questo caso arriverà. E arriverà quando uno dei tre personaggi che sono in prigione oggi deciderà di parlare. Se su Amanda e Raffaele si può discutere, ci si può dividere, li si può ritenere innocenti, colpevoli, le prove sono, non sono univoche. Su, Raffaele, su Rudy non ci sono dubbi più. Lui è un uomo seduto sull'ergastolo ed è lui che deve decidere. At the beginning of the investigation into Meredith's murder, the story had all been sex, drugs and students, a generation out of control in a romantic renaissance city. The police and press had been united in selling their sensational story to an eager international audience. 
Five months on, however, the picture is a lot less clear. You see, although we have all the DNA, all the technical devices to ascertain, it's, it's never, never really thinks in terms of raw, crude, factual evidence. We're always trying to find a psychological motivation. Now these two people, that after that drama were seen all over the world really embracing, kissing each other. So people thought, well, they are covering up something. They don't behave naturally. They, they should be crying. They should be crushed. It remains to be seen whether Knox, Selecito or Guaida will be found guilty. The police remain confident. Others worry that the suspects are being judged as much on their behavior as on the evidence. Allora, è stata un'investigazione squisitamente di natura psicologica eh, perché siamo riusciti ad arrivare ad individuare i colpevoli soprattutto sull'osservazione delle reazioni psicologiche e comportamentali che hanno avuto nel corso degli interrogatori. Non abbiamo avuto nessun ausilio da altri tipi di investigazione, però comunque questo ci ha consentito di arrivare in brevissimo tempo all'individuazione dei colpevoli. Then Meredith was accused of behaving badly. New blood tests were said to show that on the night she died, Meredith had drunk enough to pass out. The investigating magistrate has now said these results are unreliable due to possible contamination of evidence. Yet again, speculation, innuendo and uncertainty are running wild in the murder of Meredith Kircher. Perugia is getting back to being famous for its chocolates rather than its murders. Life for the students is also returning to normal. New students arrive each term, just as others graduate each year. If Meredith had lived and got to the end of her course, she too would have been celebrating. And Perugia would have become just a great memory.